Well, well, we know from Margaret Thatcher and others that socialists will just carry on spending other people's money, yours in particular. This, James, is all about finding ways to take money from you and spend it on madcap schemes. A few very, very dangerous warning signs in what Jim, in what Jim Chalmers is announcing. One, he's going to include a new taxonomy to label the climate impact mm -hmm. of different investments. We've warned about that <sighs> on the show. This is this so-called ESG. ESG. If yeah. you see ESG on your portfolio, sell, sell, sell. Because all it means is that they're putting touchy-feely, lefty, woke policies in front of profit. When they do that, that means loss and the loser is you. The other thing, James, that they're going to look at is some kind of weird, crazy climate uh, credit scheme where you mm. don't look at uh, the credit rating of something, you look at its climate rating. This is all, James. Uh, we've seen it uh, in New Zealand under Ardern, complete failure there. Well, this is... These policies always end up impoverishing a country. Australia, you were warned. Look out, we're going downhill fast. And can you know, I just add to that, you know, Jim Chalmers says that he wants to make the economy values based. Well, fine, but the question is whose values exactly. and this is and what values they are going best. to be pushing are a very certain sort of labor value. We've seen this uh, you know, with IR laws, everything here. This is a return to the old sort of state corporatist model yes. where governments Big corporations and big unions all work together to divide, control the economy. And who loses out? The individual, the individual Absolutely. investor, uh, the individual being able to build and create wealth. I mean, let's just take one small sector of this. Housing, for example. They are going to make it very, very hard for people to build wealth in housing. They want people to be dependent on the government for housing. Buy and your they, house with the government. Labor's and, housing And, and the government will, will be a shareholder in your Thing. And you won't be. And they they want fewer, you know, individual property holders having you know a small portfolio of rental properties. They want to have big companies being the renters or big governments being the renters, so that people can't make money, you know, and build wealth through a property portfolio. The same thing is going to happen in every sector of the economy. This and is an so anti-wealth, anti-individual proposal. Absolutely, great. And it's far more dangerous now because in the past there was at least uh, private entities weren't ideologically aligned. Their focus was shareholder value, profits. Now we've got the long left's march through the institutions well and truly taking hold in the corporate world. So when you've got a leftist government and leftist uh, corporates colluding together, there will be a loser, there will be winners and there will be losers. And the losers, as we said, are the individuals. And we should be making it easier for people to build wealth, particularly people who are not born into wealth. They should mm -hmm. not have... No, but this is, we this already is all have about... so many roadblocks for those who want to be self-sufficient, who don't want to rely on the state in retirement or any point in their life. And now we're going to make it even harder. But, but really, James, sorry, James, sorry. you said something about the links between government and basically big corporations yep. and a left-leaning government uh, in combination, working in combination with... Uh, basically organised uh, Labour Party unions. There is a name for that, yeah. and it's called fascism. And it was uh, the National Socialist Party of uh, Germany in the 1930s did exactly that, took left-wing policies, fused them with corporations, gave power to individual large corporations, uh, and the individuals squashed. Rita, you're talking about the lack... Uh, what the, it's the individual that pays, but the big price that we will all pay is the price of freedom. Small businesses, we are in real trouble. Individuals in real trouble. Uh, this is an attack on every individual's freedom because property, as James was saying, they will attack housing, they will attack franking credits, they will base everything on this ridiculous climate change cult and we, the individuals and freedom-loving Australians and tradies and Can so on, more... will suffer enormously thanks to Labor. 30%, James mentioned values, only 30-something percent of the population voted for these clowns, where 70% of us did not vote for it, and we are going to suffer. They're going to make us pay. And can I just say one thing, too? You know, Rita mentioned before the long march through the institutions, you know, and how corporates are all woke or they seem like they're woke. Well, you know, now they're going to have to be. We foreshadowed yeah. this last week on this program when we talked about how Madeleine King, the resources minister, said to mining companies, you know, 
I reckon it'd be in your yes. interest ahem, yes. to support The Voice. Ahem, yes. if you've got any sort of mining proposals before us, because, you know, you have a big role, wink, wink, to play. This is the way it's going to work now. It's no longer going to be, um, you know, the government and bureaucracy being an honest broker for the economy, but saying you toe the line, you support us, you support our programs and our ideology, and you pump that through your employees and everybody else. Um, and sure, yeah, we'll make sure that you do well. If you don't, well, tough luck. Exactly. And watch out for Australia's are great investors in property. We know mm -hmm. that. Uh, and, and it's not the, the big end of town. It's your mum and dad at investors who use property to build some sort of financial security. We've got the same lot who were part of the Shorten uh, proposed government yeah, that Chris failed, Bowen. Chris who Bowen. wanted to joke. dismantle negative gearing mm -hmm. programs. Yeah. And, credits, and, and th th this credits. is going to give them, again, a licence to do that. And their justification is, look at the budget blowout. This is something we need to do, even though uh, plenty of economists would argue that the long-term consequences of, of that are actually very bad for the budget. But... They'll get it through because the, the media will cheerlead this every step of the way. And that's the great advantage this Albanese government and any left-leaning government has is uh, the media. The media is almost a propaganda arm. Uh, but they are on board. Just look at how little criticism there has been since May of this government. Even when it has stuffed up, there is barely any coverage. If it's mentioned, it's it's done in the news cycle within a few hours and nothing like we saw with the obsessive reporting of Scott Morrison's in Hawaii for a week. <laughs> yes, I mean, exactly. compare yeah. that with the missteps we've seen so far. They actually matter. And, and, and the lack of reporting, the lack of outrage. Uh, so that, that is just, I guess, a function. That but, is a function something, of... something you said re earlier, Rita, which is absolutely spot on, is that none of this would have been possible or certainly it would have been a lot harder for Labor to be pushing all this through if the Scott Morrison government and the Turnbull government before that hadn't made it so easy. Yep. Signing up to uh, Glasgow, signing up to Net Zero, all this sort of stuff has made it... They laid out the red carpet for... Literally the red carpet. Billions for of job seats. To do all yeah. this stuff, absolutely.